it can feel a little too small, which I've met with the administration. I definitely have a lot of strong feelings about Patterson Court Circle. Rat life is an extremely dominating part. I have suffered uh, many microaggressions. Davidson has really given me that opportunity to flourish. All my tour guides were white. All of the people at the admissions panels were white. And I really feel like this is the experience that women of color and other marginalized people deserve to hear. Hello everyone, my name is Alice, I use she her pronouns, and I am a rising third year at Davidson College. I made a similar video last year about my experience thus far at Davidson College, my first year experience. I still stand by a lot of what I said in the previous video, but I feel like there are some things that have changed in terms of my viewpoint. I wanted to be 100% transparent with you all and really give you the full honest version of what it's like going to Davidson College in the South in a predominantly white institution. So a little bit about me. I just finished my second year at Davidson College. I'm an Africana major and a Hispanic studies minor. I am involved in a variety of different clubs and organizations, all predominantly centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion work. I can list all of my organizations right here. I'm extremely passionate about being an activist on campus. I also have a podcast called From the Underground, and this podcast is meant to elevate marginalized voices on campus and really continue to document the truthful experience of the lived experiences of students of color and marginalized students on campus. I also have this YouTube channel, obviously, in addition to all the clubs and organizations that I'm involved in. I'm extremely passionate about showing and documenting this candid version of what Davidson is really like. That is honestly what I had wished when I was in your seat. Maybe you're not attending Davidson specifically, but another Southern predominantly white institution. I feel like there's not enough representation of women of color. I am planning on just going through a bunch of like the common questions that are asked when I talk to admitted students, 2026, students or maybe first years who asked me about my advice on certain things. Before I go into all of that, I kind of wanted to go into my general second year experience as a whole just very briefly. I would say that just in general, I was really able to navigate Davidson in a better way. I think that Davidson itself is a very hard place to exist in as a woman of color, but I feel like I was able to appreciate and cultivate moments of community more than ever compared to my first year. Also, that was due to COVID. The second year, I feel like was a lot more normal and kind of more Davidson pre-pandemic like. The first semester was very difficult. I was dealing with a lot of um, SA stuff and I was just having to deal with a lot of navigation of how to cope with different things and I feel like by the time spring semester came around I feel like I had a better grasp on how to set healthier habits and how to set boundaries and how to really just enjoy Davidson for what it is even if it is a very hard community at times to exist in. I think that I was able to cultivate more joy and more appreciation in the world around me. I give a lot of thanks to a lot of my mentors, both upper class activists who really like showed me the way and showed me how to navigate Davidson and deal with some of the flaws within this institution. But also I feel like another big help through the second year was my mentors, including the Buddhist chaplain and other just figures who and role models who continue to show me that getting through Davidson is very possible as a woman of color and it's not just possible, it is a feat that can definitely be achieved. I'm extremely proud of myself for how far I've come and how much I've learned this past year. That is just kind of a brief outline of how my second year went at Davidson College. These were my classes and I really enjoyed all of my classes. That gets me into my first question within the academic section. What is Africana Studies and why is it even useful? Like what can you even do with that? I feel like at times even at Davidson Africana Studies or maybe other humanities are not looked upon as practical or deemed worthy to be accepted within the society afterwards and only econ or poli sci or other big departments like that really are deemed credible. Africana transcends beyond just the classroom. It gives you the toolkit to properly navigate the society and facilitate these important dialogues about race and racism and about these caricially harmful institutions that exist and give you the words to articulate how to dismantle these institutions and how to elevate the experiences of black people 
and all people of color and all marginalized persons. It applies to every single job, whether that be a lawyer, whether that be a doctor, whether that be in social work, psychology. It will show you how to be a better human being with more empathy and more understandings of lived experiences of marginalized people who don't maybe identify with the same background identities as you do. I feel like Africana Studies for me 100% shaped my work, my diversity, equity, and inclusion work here on campus, and the dialogues you have within Africana Studies are absolutely unmatched. The teachers and the professors and the students around you and the community pushes the limits and really challenges you to face uncomfortable and to face your discomfort within certain situations with certain background identities, to face all of your biases and to really confront them head on and to foster such a safe and inclusive environment where you feel like you can really be seen. So the next question is, is there grade deflation? And I would say for me personally, I have not personally felt grade deflation, but I would say I work very hard for all the grades that I receive and I feel like I deserve the grades that I receive. I would say that maybe other higher academic institutions such as like Harvard or Stanford or other institutions like that, that the lowest grade that professors give out is a B for example, and that maybe in some of those institutions, students put in less work but receive higher grades. So that'd be great inflation. At Davidson, for me personally, I feel like I've received all fair grades. So the next few questions are going to cover the social life at Davidson. To start off, I feel like the biggest thing in terms of balancing an academic and social life is to set boundaries. And so I think just like setting those boundaries for myself in terms of like staying in a Friday night and taking time for myself. Or another night, I'll really want to go to trivia with my friend and I wanted to get ahead on some reading. But then setting that reading aside, balancing that, the social and academic aspect is very hard and it also is very individual because I think that every single person has a different lens on like what kind of balance that they want to achieve and that's all very unique to that certain person so for me I feel like I obviously want a social life and I feel like I have a vibrant social life but at the same time I will not sacrifice my mental health to go out just to go out and sometimes you just need moments to ground yourself and moments to take time for yourself and so I think all of that is very important for me and so just incorporating the self-care and healing practices within my routine has been extremely helpful for me to obtain that proper balance between social and academic life here at Davidson. In terms of some examples for setting boundaries, that might mean emailing a professor, saying that your mental health is not in the place that you would like it to be, or asking for extensions, or saying no to certain things, whether that be something that your friend asks you to do, or extracurricular commitment, and just like being able to really evaluate your own state and if you can really give to that other person or other activity, and if you can't, don't be afraid to say no. Next, is Davidson too small? Davidson is around 1,800 students 1900 students there's no graduate students for me it was a bit bigger than my high school my high school was 800 students i'm from vermont to me it felt like a lot bigger but at the same time like i knew other students who came from high schools that were even bigger than davidson i have like mixed feelings about the small community of davidson i feel like academically i just cherish the small community so much especially as an africana major i think my biggest class was like 25 and my smallest class was four and i'm a second year and i remember my second semester first year class was five people. I just feel like that says a lot, one about the Africana Studies Department, but as well as just about the student-teacher ratio and the ability to really cultivate relationships with the professor, which for me is an extremely important reason as to why I chose Davidson. Yeah, academically, I feel like I've been able to really find a lot of mentors within my professors, within other faculty members, and that definitely would not happen if I were at a big school. My ability to really hone in on my activism and my activist work on campus and being able to really feel heard and seen on campus definitely I feel like the small school environment really contributes to that because the administration listens even if they don't exactly act upon exactly what I want them to do they listen and they take time to meet with me I've met with Carol Quillen three times the now former president I've met with the administration I've really made myself heard and I don't think that would be possible at a big school in addition the friendships you can cultivate at a small school I'm a very extroverted person I love meeting other people I still feel like I haven't met every single person in the college so I feel like even if I'm saying hi to everyone and the fact that I haven't really met everyone really does say that even 
though Davidson is small. It allows for those intimate relationships to form between students, but at the same time, I haven't met everyone and I'm excited to meet more people. Those are kind of the pros of a small school. In terms of the cons of going to a small school, a lot of my friends are interconnected in certain ways. And so I think that sometimes the network of connections at Davidson becomes a little bit too real, if you know what I'm saying. It's very hard to dissociate from certain people at times because the web of connections is so strong at Davidson and because it's such a small school, it seems like everyone knows everyone, meaning that like if you try to avoid someone, it's very hard to avoid that person on campus. I talk a little bit more about that in my Davidson activist video, specifically regarding like timeline and essay stuff, but I definitely would say just on that front, it definitely can feel like very isolating at times. You can't really make yourself hidden. The next question is, have you found your group? Have you found your people? And truthfully, I would say kind of yes. Never really liked having a set friend group, but I really feel like this semester cultivated a very vibrant community within Davidson and I was very, very grateful for that. I really feel like for me as an activist, the activist community here is extremely strong. I found natural mentorship within the older Africana majors, within the older upper class people who have been through two plus years at Davidson who can tell me advice on how to navigate this predominantly white institution. For me, I just feel like extremely supported by the upper class people for the most part. Advice that I would give for making friends would just be say hi to everyone. Say hi to the workers. Say hi to the janitors. Say hi to the people in comments. Say hi to that person that you haven't seen in a while in a class who maybe you don't really know but you want to get to know. Those are the types of friendships that organically form that honestly will probably mean the most to you, I feel like. Also, cultivate deeper appreciation for the workers at Davidson, whether that be the fiscal plant, whether that be the cleaners who clean the buildings, whether that be the commons workers, and I just feel like at times Davidson students don't appreciate how much work they put into making Davidson a better place. So the next question, how involved are people with Greek life? How involved are people with eating houses? What even are eating houses? I keep referencing Dear Davidson College Activist video, but I definitely would recommend going and watching that. Also, I'll link my exposition about Patterson Court Circle in the description below but i definitely have a lot of strong feelings about patterson court circle which is basically the greek life association or davidson patterson court circle includes the ifcs which are the predominantly white fraternities the eating houses which are the predominantly white sorority-esque groups as well as mphcs and mgcs which are historically black and latinx founded sororities and fraternities the parts that i feel that are problematic within patterson court circle do not lie within the mphcs and mgcs but in the eating houses and the ifcs and i talk more extensively about this in my activist video but i would say that um even though 30 percent of men are in fraternities rat life is an extremely dominating part at davidson college and that is honestly something that i wish i had known before coming to davidson because even if the number is low even the percentage of people involved is low it is just by de facto because it is a small college and not extremely accessible to charlotte in terms of like going out going to bars etc it kind of lends itself to having fraternities be kind of the center of the party life on campus, especially the IFCs, which are like the predominantly white fraternity. This creates extremely toxic culture where oftentimes racism and sexual assault are excused and homophobia. Greek life, unfortunately, is a central dominator of that kind of party scene. But I would say that that does not mean that there is no social life at Davidson for people who don't choose to participate in Greek life. I personally, like for many different reasons, don't believe in supporting power and court circle or the ifcs or eating houses but i still have a very vibrant community i still have a very vibrant social life i still go out sometimes still go to parties sometimes but i'm very intentional with which parties i go to for example the bsc the boxing coalition hosts many fun parties or just party in general i feel like is a buzzword i feel like for me like going out and as well as going out i feel like going out can mean like having a good game night with friends going exploring in the cross-country trails going and looking at the stars like just random things like that can mean going out. It doesn't mean engaging with substances in a closed room in a dark space. Like that is maybe fun for some people, but for me, I've learned that that's not where I kind of like to have fun. That's not really where I gain a lot of energy from. That's where a lot of anxiety kind of stems. And so I feel like for me, just cultivating like individual moments with small groups of communities, a healthier way to engage with like the Davidson life on the weekends. Next question, the one that I kind of touched on at the beginning was like, what are eating houses? How does that kind of feed into the 
Patterson Court Circle Life. Eating houses is a Davidson specific term. It basically refers to a bunch of houses on Patterson Court Circle, a physical location on campus. There are four different eating houses and basically each of them have their own type of stereotypes, kind of like a sorority, but you don't live in them. They're non-residential and you only eat in them, but you do engage in the community. A lot of times girls and non-binary people join with their friend groups and it is a community aspect on campus and the reason why I don't associate with eating houses is I really do feel like eating houses just like the IFCs are predominantly white they are predominantly white cisgender and heterosexual that just to me is not an experience as a woman of color somewhere where I really feel like I kind of want to belong in I want to surround myself in and so therefore I'm not in an eating house just because I'm not in an eating house just because I'm not in a preformed organization does not mean that I don't have a community community doesn't mean that I don't have a social life. I feel like I lead a very fun social life and I feel like I make a lot of connections on campus but maybe not in the traditional way and so I think for me as an Asian woman who I don't really feel like it's my place to join an MPHC or an MGC, the historically black and Latinx sororities and for me I don't really stand for just Greek life as a whole as a national organization but also there are no Asian Greek life associations on campus and so for me as an Asian woman it makes it a little bit difficult to decide well I just have the eating houses or I have nothing. I just want to offer that experience but reassure people that even if you don't join an eating house, you will still have like a great social life and you can still cultivate great friendships. People ask me, how is the party life on campus? Is there pressure to engage with certain substances? And for me, I honestly would say no. There definitely is a strong drinking culture, but that's specifically, I feel like, tied to the IFCs and eating houses. But I feel like in general, there is not, if that makes sense. So it's like if you choose to engage with an IFC or eating house, I feel like there is a strong culture around like substances. But I would say that if you don't choose to join one or you feel like you don't really want to be a big part of the, the Patterson Court cir Circle system, I don't feel like there in general overall is a pressure and that kind of leads me to how safe is Davidson College and for me as a woman of color I feel like that's something that I definitely would want to know about I don't feel like too scared walking alone at night from the library for example back to my dorm but just as a woman of color I think in general I feel a little bit on edge sometimes but I feel like that's specifically regarding my background identities I intentionally surround myself in spaces that aren't dark clothes spaces <laughs> that aren't predominantly white spaces those kind of party scenes I don't necessarily feel very safe in because I do feel like there is a lot of SA on campus. Unfortunately, I think that's just in general like a trend for all college campuses. But again, I mentioned a lot more about this in my activist video, but within the Patterson Court Circle, there is a lot of SA that occurs within those spaces. And for me, I don't feel safe within those spaces because of past experiences. And so I just choose not to engage in them. But I would say there are obviously people on spaces that make me feel safe. And I just try to seek that out, if that makes sense. I feel like another question that is very commonly asked how is the dating scene how's the hookup scene as i said before i'll just like iterate again davidson is a small school and at times it can feel a little too small just in terms of like the web of connections and how many people know other people and so obviously at times it can feel a little bit like high school and gossip whatever you choose is what you choose but at the same time like dating in a small school does have its consequences in terms of like if you end on bad terms then you're just gonna have to navigate how to deal with that in a small school and see each other all the time and like having maybe overlapping friends. If you are heavily involved with the Patterson Court Circle scene, I feel like there is a higher likelihood that you'll be more involved with the hookup scene and within the dating scene and maybe have more chances. But I would say there's a lot of dating within the athletes. I feel like people usually date their first year and stick, stick it out or don't really date at all and just choose to not engage the dating scene and maybe instead decide to engage in the hookup scene or none at all. The next question, how did you find your group? I would just highly recommend going to different events and make it maybe make you feel uncomfortable like going to different affinity or organization events like i feel like just like being able to put yourself out there and get to know other people and get to know other background identities and their unlived experiences is something for me that i really have found rewarding this past year so next is a little bit about the food how is it being vegan at davidson i started being plant-based january of 2022 about i would say that being a flex vegan which is a new term that I've coined is something that I feel like is extremely possible at Davidson. Personally, I'm not a strict vegan, so I call myself plant-based 
slash a flexi vegan because for the most part like 80% of the time I'm vegan I'm definitely 100% of the time vegetarian sometimes I just have to roll with it because I think that being restrictive with your diet is not healthy and realistically at college I understand that being vegan and choosing to be plant-based is for me just a personal moral decision as well as like a decision to better the environment but also it comes with the socioeconomic privilege to be able to do so and so I have the four meals a week plan at Davidson and so basically that means four meals at Vail Commons site which is like the biggest study hall on campus and then I have a certain amount of dining dollars that can be used. I feel like that has been a perfect balance because I cook lunches basically during the week. I meal prep on Sundays and then do commons or other things during the night and then I always make myself breakfast in the morning. As I said before, I'm not in an eating house anymore so I don't eat at the eating house anymore. I used to be in one. I would say commons is actually great. People ask like how is the food in general at Davidson College and I feel like you know it's not like top tier like chef inspired food but at the same time if you hack the system and put one thing with the other thing from different like sections of commons you can make a fire meal and so I think it just takes time and patience to kind of understand what the spices are and understand where to go and how to hack the system. I would say that like the food is not bad here and for me as a plant-based person like I always find options at commons and at other locations as well. Finally one of the biggest questions is how honestly has your experience been as a woman of color on campus? I would definitely say that I have suffered uh, many microaggressions from teachers, from faculty, from other students, from peers. Honestly I feel like a lot of things that I experienced at Davidson are unfortunately things I must prepare myself myself to face in the real world or after Davidson just being a marginalized woman of color at the same time I feel like due to these microaggressions and racist comments that have been made towards me and just like all the things that really happened to me after I've tried to do some activism work see my Davidson student activist video all of this has really geared me to become a more equipped vocal activist who really can navigate hate and pushback and bullying and all types of things. All of those skills I feel like are very useful for like what I want to be doing later in life if that makes sense. Meaning that like if I want to push the boundaries, if I want to expose the institutions for what they are, I will have to receive some pushback and so being able to kind of navigate that at Davidson for me has been extremely helpful. Being a woman of color here at Davidson is extremely difficult. It's exhausting. It's tiring which just means that's why you must set boundaries. That's why you have to put your self-care first. That's why it forces us to cultivate such vibrant pockets of community within Davidson and that's why it makes Davidson so special and I feel like going to the south in a predominantly white institution I feel like I've taken a whole new direction Africana studies has definitely just totally shaped like how I engage with these institutions inside and outside of the classroom and how I choose to show up how I choose to cultivate other relationships with other people based on all these values of integrity of truth and transparency and um, vulnerability and ability to be able to understand and listen to other people's lived experiences experiences, all of that, the ability to make a change, to find my voice, to be able to be a better person. Davidson has really given me that opportunity to flourish and become a better person and so I am forever grateful for that and so although it is extremely tiring as a woman of color to be a Davidson, I, Davidson has taught me how to take care of myself, how to put myself first, how to advocate for myself and I really am thankful for that and so I really wanted to be very transparent and this is why I'm taking the time to film this video and to just like really candidly share my experience as a woman of color with everything that I've been through and so I can't really tell you if Davidson is the right choice for you but I can tell you about my lived experience here at Davidson and I can tell you about the experiences I've been through and the difficulties the hardships but also how rewarding at times it is and how many special people I've met here at Davidson who, has, who have really shaped me into who I am today you forge that path for yourself like whatever direction you want to take it whether it be at Davidson or another school like you can forge that path like you can determine what path you want to take and I feel like for me Davidson has definitely given me that activism path that I want to take and I'm forever grateful for that and I'm so excited for what the future holds and all the new people I'll be able to meet at Davidson as time goes on if you all have any other questions or concerns or want to speak to me further about my experience as a woman of color at a predominantly white institution at Davidson in the south I would be more than happy to talk to you because I really do feel like as a prospective student when I was in your shoes or just when I was looking at colleges I never really had this type of video I never felt represented I never felt like there was another Asian woman telling me or another woman of color telling me candidly their experience all my tour guides were white all of the people at the admissions panels were white and I really feel like this is the experience that women of color and other marginalized people deserve to hear 
this is the truth that should be shared. Thank you so much for showing up just as you are and thank you so much for just being very truthful to yourself and thank you again for taking time to listen to me and I will see you all in the next vlog. Bye!